having access to like the code base, the size of meta. Cascading effect. New hooks like use action state, use optimistic. It would save developer time. I think having a lot of frameworks really good for the ecosystem. Then React is the framework for you. Immediate feedback from engineers using the React APIs. Spontaneous interactions with people and answering their questions. So many different kinds of questions that I didn't really expect. Today at React Summit, the biggest React conference worldwide, we're joined by Satya Gunasekaran, a software engineer on the React core team at Meta, where he's currently building the React compiler. Previously, he worked on the V8 JavaScript compiler at Google. We'll dive into the updates in React 19, his work on the React compiler, the innovation process at Meta, and tips for getting the most out of your conference experience. My name is Dan, I'm a mobile software engineer with close to 10 years of experience and also a content creator on Instagram and YouTube, posting about mobile app development and software engineering in general. All right, let's jump into our conversation. All right, Satya, uh, it's good to have you here. Thanks for uh, having me, yeah. Glad to be here. React is one of the most uh, popular frameworks in web development and uh, among the best things about it are the passionate core team and also the great community. And this push pushes React forward. Yep. Here we are with a new release, React 19. Yep. Could you tell us what are some of the big updates in, in React 19? This new release has been in the works for a while now. Um, I think it's been like a couple of years since our last major release. Some of the big things are um, we've added a lot of um, features for form actions. That's like a big part of this release is new hooks, like use action state, use optimistic, uh, use form status to like work better with forms. React server components um, become stable with this release. So that's a, that's a big thing. And then there's like a whole slew of like quality of life improvements, uh, like adding ref um, as a prop rather than uh, a second argument. You don't need to forward a ref. So that's really nice. A lot of people have been excited about that. It's a small change. I think for me personally, the React compiler is the one that I'm most excited about since I've worked on that. Um, the React compiler works with 19. It doesn't ship with 19, though. The, the 19 release will go stable. The React compiler will still stay experimental for a little bit. And then it will go stable later once we've uh, gotten more feedback from the community. So upgrading to React 19 will unlock the compiler for you, but it ships separately, not as part of the 19 release itself. So yeah, that's that. Th these are some of the bigger things in the 19 release. And you mentioned you you were part of the team working on the compiler. Yep. Um, did you see like significant performance improvements while using it compared to manual memorization and what uh, right. developers needed yep. to do before? Yeah, it's actually interesting. When we first started the project, we only focused on the DX wins of like developers not having to manually memorize. So we were like thinking about this as like a way to like improve the life of a developer, not about the performance wins we will get. So when when I started on the project, we were trying to measure how much time is spent manually memorizing, not the performance win. Because we thought an app that has been already manually memorized would have the same performance with the compiler, mm -hmm. right? The only difference would be that you don't have to do manual memorization. So it, it would save developer time. That, right. was, the that was the initial goal. goal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but once we started trying the compiler on like different products at Meta, we saw there was like a big jump in performance even on code that was manually memorized. More than the performance wins, we also saw the performance wins lead to engagement wins in the product. So people were using the product more because the performance was better. So we could correlate the performance wins to actual like product engagement wins, which is like the best outcome that we could have hoped for. So it was like the compiler was like a win on but the DX, where users no longer have to think about memorization, they don't have to, they get performance wins, and then the product is also better now because users are using it more. But maybe we should talk about what the compiler is for people who are not familiar with the compiler. Yeah, sure. So React has a way to like cache computations uh, using this hook called use memo and use callback. So if you have like an expensive operation, you can memoize that computation with this hook. So the hook will make sure the computation is not rerun unless its dependencies change. Mm -hmm. So this this has been the way that React developers have traditionally optimized their app as using use callback, use memo. But this can be brittle. Like if you uh, forget to memoize one object or like one prop that's passed to like a children component, then the memoization 
uh, gets lost. You have a cascading effect. Right, you will have a cascading effect. So developers have been using use memory use callback to optimize re-rendering. But the problem is, if you miss one, then the cascade happens. So generally what happens I've seen is developers memoize their app really well, and it works. And then someone comes along like a few weeks later, and they update the component, but they forget to memoize the new value that they created. And that beats all the work that their previous teammate did. So with the compiler now, it will automatically add all of the memoization. So you don't have to constantly think about memoization. Mm -hmm. You can just write React code, just think about the UI, and then the compiler will automatically optimize your code. So your app is now fast by default. That, that's really cool. And how you got from like that initial goal of uh, saving developer time to actually improving performance and user experience right. uh, as yep. a side effect of that. So now that we talked about uh, all, all these features, like I want to ask you what uh, drives innovation in the React core team and how do you plan future updates? The React team at Meta, we work really closely with all of the product teams at Meta. So we work very closely with like the Instagram web team, the Facebook web team, uh, and we collaborate a lot with them. And they talk to us about the issues they're facing when building out Facebook.com or Instagram.com. Um, and then we think about how to integrate the solutions that they're building or the problems that they're facing uh, into React to solve the problem for everyone. That's kind of how we think about it is like, people have complained about how brittle use memo was. This is something we've seen internally at Facebook as well. Developers have been like complaining about how do I think about use memo? Should I always memoize everything? Or is it not okay to memoize everything? So this this is how it feeds into our like design discussions. Is like these are the problems that our teams are facing internally. And then we prototype something and we go back to them and and try to like ship it at Facebook to understand the feedback. And then that helps us get a better understanding of the solution that we just built, if it's good enough. And it also helps like iron out all the bugs when we ship things at Facebook, because Facebook is used by a lot of people and there's like a big surface area. So it's like a lot of the work is done in collaboration with the Facebook team, the Instagram team, and all of the web team at um, Meta. We also talk uh, a lot to the community. Like for example, we have a strong relationship with the next team, with the Remix team, and they give us feedback on things like server components. We tell them our reasoning for building a, building a feature in a certain way. So that's, that's kind of how we try to solve problems. Like we try to get feedback from partners who use React and then try to solve a problem in a way that works for everyone. So it has to compose really well, uh, the, the solution that we're building. It has to, it, it shouldn't be like a one-off. Right, right. And it's, I, I think this approach is uh, really smart to uh, release it internally first and then get, uh, get, feedback, get feedback and improve yep. it before like putting it out for the right. entire community. Right. I remember, I think you mentioned something about this also on the panel, yep. uh, about how you test like the first version of the compiler, right? right? This, this happened with the compiler where we've been thinking about a compiler for a long time now, and we actually built multiple versions of the compiler. And the first few iterations didn't actually work out. It didn't really pan out. But we learned a lot of valuable lessons from those iterations. And that led to the current version of the compiler. So having access to like the code base, the size of meta is really a big advantage for React. Like we can, we can test things really well. Yeah, and then with a very large user base. Right. Yeah, and we can get immediate feedback from engineers using the React APIs. Now maybe we can switch to some questions about the conference and yep. uh, how do you feel about, uh, what, what What do you think it makes a, a great uh, tech conference? Yeah, there's a couple of things, I guess. Um, having really good lineup of speakers is, is really nice to, yeah, I think, I think people working on the frameworks and like, people using the frameworks, they have really good context on where the front end ecosystem is moving. So having these folks come in and uh, talk about their work is really is really great. I think one of the more underrated aspects of a conference is the hallway conversations. For me, that's like the biggest reason I go to conferences. Like I like to like meet people who use uh, React, understand how they use React and get feedback from them. This is the way for us to connect with the community. So for me personally, I, I more than the talks, I'm, I'm really big on talking to people in the, in the hallways. Yeah, on the networking side. Yeah. I, I can really relate to that because in the beginning of my career as a software developer, I was going to conferences 
with this idea in mind that I learned a lot of things right. from the presentations and I did, but uh, I wasn't aware of the networking side right. and the benefits that it brings and how you connect with other people. Yep. And uh, that's, that's really a, a great thing about tech conferences. So uh, do you have tips for people that uh, go to their first tech conference? Maybe yeah. they're a bit shy to... I think, yeah, I would say don't, don't, don't feel shy. Like, I think just approach people you want to talk to. Um, I think one tip that I've has been useful for me is I usually go through the schedule before, make a list of talks that I'm interested in. When I attend the talks, I try to make a list of questions. And then I try to find the speaker after the talk and then ask them any, any clarifying questions I might have. And that's, that's a good way to like start networking with the speaker. If I don't really know anyone else in the conference, I think there's a lot of social events now with the conference as well. So that's another gateway to like meet and network with other people. I think there's also the Q and A booth here, right after the talk. That was really useful. Uh, we had a lot of people ask about the panel discussion right after. That was a great way for me to talk to people as well. Yes, exactly. So it's not only about like st sticking to the schedule of what you need to present, but right. also like having uh, these uh, spontaneous interactions yep. with people and answering their questions. Yeah, connecting. Yeah. Agreed. Really cool, yeah. So how do you feel about the, the React Summit so far? How do you like it? No, it's been great. Um, yeah, Amsterdam is an amazing place mm -hmm. as well. Um, have you been here before? I have been here before and it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's amazing. The conference has been really great. Like, it's been well organized. Like I said, the discussion Q&A room right after the panel was a really great idea. We had a lot of people come by, um, ask us questions. So there's like a specific spot for the speakers to go and hang out. That was really good. Yeah, I think overall, I think it's pretty good. Yeah, that's that's my feeling too. I, I really liked the, how, how it's uh, organized and structured right. so far. I also really liked how the, the lineup was very diverse as well. Mm -hmm. I really liked having the attendees be being a lot of diversity as well. But yeah, so many different kinds of questions that I didn't really expect. So that was really good. Right, right. And also like you have some uh, some topics that are more general and others that are more specific. Yep. So there's something for everyone. Yep. What do you think about the um, after party and networking after the, um, the conference? Uh, is it yeah. something you look forward to? For me, like the networking bit is one of the more important bits in the conference, like friend, meeting other people who, especially as someone who works on React, I think it's more really more important for me to like meet the community and talk to the community. Right. Um, and I think it's also important for like people who use React to come and give us feedback so that we can improve it for them. Like uh, an after party where people can like talk and network. That sounds like a really good idea. So maybe just a couple of the Blitz questions. Yeah, short let's do answers. That. Yeah. What motivates you in professionally and in your career? Um, when I try to like work on things, I have this framework where I want to work on things that are like technically challenging, mm -hmm. things that are used by a lot of people. That motivates me when I see people using my work. So that is, and then the other one is like, there should be something in, in that project or like in, in that work that I can learn from. This is the framework that I use when I already think about, hey, what should I work on next? In software development, what do you think it's the most imp most difficult thing? Is it uh, like writing the code or planning features or what, what's the most difficult about it? Okay, that's, that's a really hard question. I think it depends. Um, if you're in a larger team, I think it makes sense. There are different kinds of dynamics that come into play at that point where you need to think about more of the soft skills where you're collaborating with a larger team. Whereas if you're on your own working on a project, then it's slightly more different where you, where it's only your technical skills that are important. Um, so I think, I think it really depends on what kind of project and team. How do you feel about the other frameworks? Uh, are they like a competition or do you think they push the web development, uh, the entire web development? Uh, oh no, I absolutely think they're, department for yeah. the, like, I think having a lot of frameworks really good for the ecosystem and for mm -hmm. people building products. A lot of frameworks are doing really amazing work. The ecosystem is all for the better for having more frameworks. Um, I don't think we're like competing necessarily. I think, I think it's good for the developers. I think for us, we just try to build the best framework and build it in a way that works well in our programming model and in our philosophy. And if that works for a lot of developers, then we would like for them to like adopt React. I think that's that's the way I look at it is is for like, if you like to think of writing code or building UIs in terms of the React way, where you just think about 
your UI as a function of state. That is the fundamental philosophy and principle behind React. Then React is the framework for you. Everything else just fall, fall, falls out from that. Yeah, so it's kind of great to have multiple options for multiple right. people and products, of course. Yeah. All right. Well, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. And uh, looking forward to seeing more of your work. Yeah, thank you for interviewing me. This was great.